As I've indicated in a few previous videos, I have been trying various medium format cameras. In this video, I'll talk about my quick thoughts on the Leica S3. Just yesterday, news leaked that Leica is discontinuing the S3 and won't be manufacturing it or supporting it anymore. I can't say I'm that surprised. My main takeaway from this camera is that while it's an amazing, typical Leica quality camera, it's old technology. It's a generation old. In my view, this camera seems more like a camera that was competing with the Hasselblad H6D100 generation of cameras, not the newest generation of mirrorless medium format cameras. And indeed, that's really my only problem with this camera. <laughs> Besides the price. <laughs> um, new, this sells for something like $20,000 for the body. Uh, these lenses are between five and $8,000, if not more. I did not pay that for this camera, to be clear. <laughs> so yeah, so my, uh, really, my only problems with this camera have to do with the fact that it's a, it's a mirrored DSLR type camera. And I've gotten used to mirrorless cameras and the advantages they offer. <laughs> I'm used to seeing my exposure before I click the shutter, not after while kind of chimping and looking at the screen. Did I nail it? Did I, did I have all my settings correct? That kind of a thing. This harks back to the days of the Nikon D850 and the Hasselblad H60, uh, where you would have to take the shot and either have a monitor or a computer uh, uh, tethered to the, the camera, or, or you got a chimp every time you take a picture, and I just don't want to do that anymore. So, I mean, in terms of image quality, I would say this camera is also sort of last generation. It's a 64 megapixel sensor that Leica developed. Absolutely beautiful images come out of this. I would say you would be hard pressed to really see the difference between an image out of this camera and say the Hasselblad H6D or a phase one. Um, again, the last generation of those cameras. I have not tried the, the newest phase one camera extensively but the phase one IQ3 and IQ4 I have used in the past. This sensor just doesn't quite compare to the 100 megapixel sensor you see in the X2D and the Fuji GFX100. It just doesn't have quite as clean of images. It doesn't seem to have quite as much dynamic range, but it is still really good. A significant jump over most full frame cameras. The color science is typical Leica, very good. Um, I think it's actually probably better than some of the newer Leica, Leica cameras like the M11 that I think the color science is a little overbaked. It's a little closer to that M10 generation of cameras, which I really liked. The build quality is just tank-like. I mean, this thing, the lens doesn't move on the mount at all. Uh, I feel like I could use it as a weapon. It's heavy. Everything is metal. The grip is fantastic. It just fits in your hand. I don't even use it with a strap. I just kind of keep it in my hand like this because it's so solid in my hand. Um, just absolutely fantastic, you know, top of the pops like a build quality, no complaints there. Another thing I really like about this camera is they incorporated, let me see if you can see that there. They incorporated both a mechanism for leaf shutter lenses like the Hasselblad cameras, but also mechanical shutter inside the camera. And you just flip this little switch here to, to switch between them. Of course, you have to have lenses that have the CS demarcation on them. Um, to, to use the, the leaf shutter, but what a cool solution. Um, also, that means that you can adapt Hasselblad H lenses to this. Um, but ultimately, that cool feature makes me just wish this was a mirrorless camera because you could adapt so, so many lenses to this with the functionality of both leaf shutter and mechanical shutter in the camera. But because it's a mirrored DSLR camera, you really can only adapt things that, that are adapted by Leica brand adapters, which are like $1,000 each. They're super expensive. Often, the adapters are more expensive than like a whole range of lenses that you'd be adapting to the camera. So, uh, you know, sort of almost cost prohibitive that, you know, in this instance. If it were a mirrorless camera, there would be, you know, third party adapters you could adapt right to the camera and that would just be phenomenal. Uh, other things, you know, ergonomics, body wise, the battery life is just okay. Um, third party batteries don't work with this as far as I can tell. You have to buy the Leica batteries, which of course are crazy expensive. Oh. Another thing I absolutely hate about this camera is that it's got a CFast card, the old big square guys, and then a CF Express card. 
the, having the C fast card in there causes all kinds of problems. It locks up the camera. It doesn't read the, the cards right. Uh, I've had it happen several times where this thing just completely locked up during a shoot. It took several minutes to get it started again. And I was freaking out that the images had been lost. Uh, it just wasn't a great experience in terms of the software. Uh, I think by and large, Leica has sort of fixed the software issues in its latest generation of cameras. Uh, uh, so that wouldn't be an issue um, in a newer version of this. But in this version, it locks up pretty often and that is frustrating. In sum, an absolutely fantastic camera. I'll put up a couple of images I've taken with it just to give you a flavor for the, the output of this beautiful thing. However, given the price, at least the current price of the camera, uh, I don't think this camera is worth it. I've gotten too used to mirrorless cameras and I just don't want to go backwards and deal with the, the, the difficulties of shooting with a DSLR camera, no matter how beautiful the images are coming out of the camera. That being said, if the camera being discontinued drops the price significantly, I would highly recommend this. If you get this for like three or four grand, you know, the lenses for like a thousand dollars, that would probably be worth it. It would make me reconsider the camera. However, as it is, you know, having to buy the, buy the body for, you know, 10 to 15 grand, that's not what I paid for it, but that's kind of what they're going for used right now. The lenses are three or four grand each. I don't think that this is probably the right choice for a lot of people. If you're already using one and you're happy with the camera, I bet you're really excited about being discontinued and hoping that it'll drop prices because you'll buy up three or four of these and be totally happy for a long, long time. I totally get that. However, coming new and fresh into the system like I might be, that's a sort of a hard pill to swallow. So if Leica comes out with a medium format camera that is mirrorless like the GFX100 and the X2D, I will be very tempted to switch again. Uh, if it's got this big build quality, if it's this kind of even similar body except mirrorless, oh man, that'll be a great camera. Maybe they bring the price down in line with the X2D, we'll say. Um, and then you can, if you could use these lenses on that camera, whoo, that would be a dream. I may, I, besides this 45 millimeter lens that I have on the camera right now, I also bought the Summicron 100 millimeter lens for the system. And I may hang on to that lens in hopes that Leica comes out with a medium format mirrorless camera because man, um, that is just a beautiful lens and renders beautifully. And it was super hard to find uh, used. So uh, I actually had to ship it from someplace like Amsterdam, I think. Uh, I'll put a shout out to the store that sold it to me. They were great. Uh, below and then the show notes below or someplace. Um, so yeah, you know, if they come out with a mirrorless version, oh man, I, I'm going to have to really reconsider if it's a, a reasonable price. Um, but until then, you, you know, highly recommend it for people that already have it. Wow. What a great camera. Be excited that prices are probably going to drop. Uh, if you're coming into mirrorless, uh, if you're coming into medium format and you don't mind a DSLR, I say take a long, hard look at this camera. It's fabulous. Um, works great with the Leica's app, Le Leica Photos app also, I should mention, um, which is ironic because the rest of the software does not work that great. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, just a great camera with great image output. But for me, someone who, uh, you know, has been shooting mirrorless, has gotten spoiled with mirrorless, this is just sort of last generation tech uh, and it left me wanting something else, uh, namely a mirrorless medium format camera. Hope that's helpful. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think about the S3. Are you using it? I'm sure there's a lot of pros out there still using it. Um, let me know if you know anything about the rumors uh, that Leica is coming out with a mirrorless digital uh, medium format camera. Uh, I've seen a couple of things online, but nothing definitive would be great to know that. Uh, yeah, so like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.